We got up early on Sunday and then caught a shuttle to the cheetah experience. That's right, we were meeting some cheetahs. This wasn't in our original plan, but when we had zero luck seeing them in the wild and left Wangi a day early, Jesse found this spot and I almost cried, I was so excited. We met with the handlers and then we met Zuva and Nikki. Zuva and Nikki are two young rescue cheetahs when once old enough will be the start of a breeding program where the cubs will learn how to survive in the wild with no human contact and once old enough will be released into the wild. There's only about 50 cheetahs left in the wild in Zimbabwe, which is so heartbreaking. So hopefully this will be the start of bringing that population back up. They only allow two short walks a day in the morning before it gets too hot allowing the cheetahs to relax and do whatever they want the rest of the time. We got to walk with Zuva and Nikki. We spent a little bit more time with Zuva because Nikki wanted to do her own thing, which I appreciated that they let her. At one point, Zuva spotted something he thought he wanted to chase and almost pulled my arm out of the socket. So much power. We would walk a bit, letting the cheetahs go where they wanted. At one point, Zuva laid down and started digging. The trainers told me that Zuva wanted to play. So cute. We would sit next to them, giving them pets. The loud purrs were wild. I just couldn't take the smile off my face. I was so incredibly happy. After that, we headed back to the safari lodge for breakfast and then to watch a vulture feeding. Globally, vultures are the most endangered group of bird species. Of the seven vulture species found in Southern Africa, all are either endangered or critically endangered. One of their biggest threats, both directly and indirectly, is poaching. Can I go with this? No problem. No problem. What? Get a photo. Yeah, I wanna. Yeah, yeah I think it's better if you sit. The thing of it is to eliminate or to do away with those predators once and for all, so that there won't be any such losses in future. That's when they come up with ideas such as putting. Poachers will poison a water hole, killing every animal that drinks from it, and then the vultures die from feeding on those carcasses. They are also poisoned to prevent alerting rangers of the location of a poached animal. Oh. <laughs> 
Vultures play a key role in the environment because they prevent the spread of pathogens and bacteria, therefore preventing disease outbreaks by removing animal carcasses from the environment. The aim of the vulture feeding is to educate people of the importance of vultures and also to give the vultures a safe and consistent place to feed. It was wild watching the vultures fly overhead and eventually swarm the ground, snatching up what they could. Another beneficial scavenger that attended the feeding was the marabou stork. These birds are huge. We noticed them at the bar overlooking the waterhole, and we could see these birds that looked massive, even from far away. The marabou stork is five feet tall with a wingspan of eight and a half feet. After feeding, we headed to our next accommodation while in Victoria Falls, Shearwater Explorers Village. They had a nice big pool by the restaurant and bar, and since we didn't have much plan for the afternoon and it was so hot, I took advantage of it and had a few cocktails while lounging in the pool. There was a brewery within walking distance from Shearwater, so we decided to check it out for dinner. There was a family of wildcats roaming around and they were adorable to watch. So, we are now in Victoria Falls. Uh, we are in Zimbabwe today. We got up early because it has been so hot here that in the afternoons you don't really want to be out doing stuff. So yesterday we just hung out by the pool in the afternoon, which was so nice. It's the first time we've actually done that. The pool was so refreshing. So, we got up early because we're gonna go check out Victoria Falls today, the Zimbabwe side, because we've already been to the Zambia side of the falls. So we sh today we'll be able to see everyone doing the devil's pool. <laughs> so we'll be able to see what we did, but from this side, everyone says it looks crazy, so 
probably good that we did it first before we see what it's like from this side. Uh, but yeah, it's gonna be awesome to see the falls again, but from this perspective, yesterday we got up early and went and met two cheetahs. And it was incredible. It was just a dream come true. I love cheetahs. They've been my favorite animal since I was little. From watching the Disney movie Cheetah. And I just, that's one thing I wanted to see coming here. Hasn't worked out. Then they're also like one of the hardest animals to see in the wild. But Jesse found this spot in Victoria Falls where you get to go meet two cheetahs, you go for a little walk with them, and it was just incredible. The cheetahs were Zuva and Nikki, male and female. They're about two years old. When they get to be three years old, then that's gonna be the start of a breeding program because there's only 50 cheetahs left in the wild in Zimbabwe, which is so sad. And they said that most cheetah cubs that are born in the wild don't survive because cheetahs have so many predators. So it's hard for the babies to survive because the mother has a hard time surviving on her own, let alone having to also protect cubs. So it's gonna be a sort of a cheetah breeding program, and then when the babies get old enough, I think they said like five years old, they'll be released into the wild and hopefully start bringing back the population. So that's amazing. But petting the cheetahs, they were so sweet. Like the purrs were unreal. Like they just seemed so happy and content. Zuva at one point wanted to play. And the trainer was like, oh, step over here. Zuva's getting playful, but they play with their claws. <laughs> so, you probably don't want to play. Anyways, it was just the most incredible experience. I didn't think that the Elephant Cafe, like, I thought that would be the most amazing experience. And now there's, like, two that I just can't. But I don't know, I think cheetahs, because... Oh. Anyways, so amazing. I can't believe that happened yesterday. I keep looking at the pictures and I'm like, oh my god, it's amazing. So, anyways, I'm gonna finish packing up my stuff today after we walk around this morning, have some breakfast, then we are headed to Botswana. We'll be going to Chobe National Park, so we're animals. There's still a chance to see like cheetahs in the wild. Zuva started licking her hands, and at first Jesse was like, oh, and the, and the trainer's like, no, it's okay, you can let them. So I put my hand out and we started licking it. And their tongues are like sandpaper, it's very shocking. Anyways, I'm rambling because I'm just so excited about that. I gotta finish getting ready, pack up my stuff, and go to the falls. Monday, we got up early again, hoping to beat the heat of the afternoon and headed for the falls. Mosi Otunia. On the Zambia side, we did the Devil's Pool, and so we wanted to check out the Zimbabwe side, where we would get to view others doing the Devil's Pool. Victoria Falls is the largest waterfall in the world and one of the seven natural wonders of the world. It is part of the Zambezi River and is located within two national parks. Its English name was chosen by David Livingston, but the locals call it Mosi Otunia, which means smoke that thunders. Since we were there during the dry season, not as much water is flowing over the falls, but we were told it's the best time to view the entire falls. Coming during the rainy season creates a ton of mist and it's hard to see the falls through it. I'm glad we did the Devil's Pool before seeing it from the Zimbabwe side. It definitely looks crazy viewing it from the Zimbabwe side.
In comparing Victoria Falls to the world's other great waterfalls, Victoria Falls is the highest, Iguazu Falls is the widest, and Niagara Falls has the most water by volume. After our hike around the falls, we headed back to the hotel, we grabbed our things, and hit the road again. It was time to head to Botswana. We grabbed lunch at a fancy resort and then hit up a grocery store for more snacks. I got a kick out of the names of the candy here. Crossing the border back into Botswana was a breeze, and before long we were at our next destination, Chobe Napani Forest Lodge, just outside of Chobe National Park. Our room here was so cool. Our balcony had a great view of the waterhole, so you could watch the animals without having to leave your room. There were quite a few baboons around. Anytime you left your room, there would sure to be a couple close by that would scatter. Oh, 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 oh,
At Guango, we had elephants drinking from the pool. And here, we had baboons. Just like Guango, we were the only guests here for the evening, so we decided to take the opportunity to do a Sundowners game drive, since we knew it would only be the two of us, our guide, and the bartender from the large, who brought us munchies and drinks to have while we watched the sun go down on our game drive. We didn't see many animals on our drive, but we did stop to check out a huge baobab tree. The baobab is a very special tree that has adapted to its environment, and it's actually a succulent which means that during the rainy season, it absorbs and stores water in its vast trunk, enabling it to produce a nutrient-dense fruit in the dry season. This is how it became known as the tree of life. Elephants also use this tree as a key water source during migration, using its water-rich inner wood to quench their thirst on long migrations. After a drive, we went back to the lodge. The cicadas here are wild. Not only are they really loud, but at night, if you're anywhere near lights, they are crazy, flying all over the place. I got hit in the face several times just walking to the restaurant. We then watched the elephants before calling it a night. <laughs> 